Um, so, so yeah, you know what this is about. This is for our sustainability report, which we're putting together. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been speaking to quite a few different organizations uh, and sustainability managers and various other people to find out what's being done to tackle this really important issue in the film and TV world. And obviously also the impact of COVID uh, in terms of well, positive and negative impact. Um, mm -hmm. So first and foremost, I wanted to find out a bit more about yourself and obviously the, the EBU and the work that you do on sustainability, because I know it's a, an incredibly important topic for you guys, isn't it? Yes. Yes. So it depends on which area we, you want to look at. So our members are all broadcasters, as you know, yeah. so it is specifically from that angle and mostly from the angle of public service media uh, side of things. But we've got two, well, three groups now. We've got one group uh, which is looking at sustainability for public service media. And that's more sort of strategy, high level pieces uh, of work that we work on. So things like uh, sustainability strategies, organizational sustainability strategies, the idea of uh, sustainability strategies, net zero strategies, um, also uh, that filtering down and sort of like the culture change that's happening in the organizations, moving away from having an organizational, just an organizational strategy, but also then making sure that the editorial strategies are also in sync with the sustainability organizational high level umbrella strategies etc so there's that we do lots of pieces of work on like uh, we've done uh, round tables uh, on uh, sustainability we had the sustainability summit we had some panel discussions etc on there on what's going on uh, in the organizations themselves uh, etc and then we've got one that uh, which i so you can correct me if i'm wrong but it's more around the production and green production yes. that you've interested in. So that we've got a, a, a group based on there. And then we've got, again, also European broadcasters, different broadcasters, but also different European uh, groups, consultancies, organizations like uh, Albert, Ecoprod, et cetera, that uh, work in different areas uh, and different parts of Europe and, and the world uh, that are part of that. And we've done some uh, roundtables on um, on the actual uh, carbon calculators, uh, and that's kind of freely available for all. We're looking at sort of green production strategies and certifications, etc. Looking at topic areas. So one thing that we're going to start looking at into detail now is waste, for example. So we yeah. we did a few pieces on carbon calculators. We're also um, a lot of the group and myself are also involved in the European Commission uh, audiovisual uh, department that's there that's kind of looking at uh, carbon calculators and green production and they're building the Eureka carbon calculator I don't know if you know yeah, I do yeah well I've spoken to others who've mentioned it yeah and how important it is I'm curious to know that I mean obviously you're touching on various different things going on which I've actually spoken about with other people but I'm wondering, are you, do you guys oversee what's going on, like with Eureka and, uh, and, and you know, the activities at Albert and the certificates, et cetera? Do you, do you get actively involved in developing them or are you more sort of overseeing to make sure that they're implemented properly and put together properly? So at the moment, uh, no, we don't. Uh, our members input into their strategies, uh, etc. So like for with Albert, you have the BBC there, you have ITV there, and they're the ones that... Uh, feed their requirements into Albert. Um, and when Albert in the actual, uh, in the groups, they they say what they're doing, what they're planning on doing. And then so and we try and create a report on an overview of what's going on in the industry. So we wouldn't just take Albert in, for example, but if any of our members and some of them are working with Eureka, for example, they will feed into uh, the Eureka uh, aspect. And then we, we kind of bring things together to say, this is, we'll do reports uh, or uh, looking into deep dives into various areas saying, you know, these are the things that are going on and this is how you can join them. What we don't want to do is kind of reinvent the wheel because there's a lot in sustainability and and there's a lot of, part of it is this, there's very little standardization. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's what we try and do uh, is 
to come to a way that we can try and standardize it and give best practices to our members and say, look, you know, if you want to do, uh, if you want to do, um, uh, create a, a, to do green productions, then here are the organizations that you could join as part of it. And here are the things that they're doing and, and give that overview. So no, we have personally, EBU is not involved in sort of setting their implementation strategies within those organizations, but the members are and, and they feed back to, to the group. So they're kind of our, our central liaison points. So just right, okay. And you talk about having a sort of standardized approach, which I think is a really important issue because when I've spoken to various different organizations, you know, the film commissions, et cetera, I think there's, there's a desire to try and learn from each other in terms of the you know, certification, uh, you know, the projects they're setting up, the way they work with producers and production teams on projects. So do you think that is happening more and more now? And I know Eureka is a particular one where you're trying to get a standardized approach. Is that being, you know, taken on board and, and, and you know, used by productions on, on a more regular basis now? So Eureka is the way. So if you looked at the different carbon calculators that were around, now the two that seem to be the main ones are the Albert one and uh, Eureka. Eureka, Eureka, yeah in a pilot so they're actually not going to be um uh sort of pushing that out until the end of the year they've said right so okay four so it's in a pilot but it is something that a lot of organizations have been part of so ecoprod has been part of it the uh waf has been part of it uh, in build, helping build that uh the german uh consultancies have been part of it and in germany it's a different story they they, they have, it's, it's mandatory that they have to do green production. It's become law in their organ in their country. So they don't necessarily need to do certifications as such uh, because everything is made in a green manner. But they've, the, those organizations like MFG, et cetera, have all, all been part of, and the consultancies have all been part of Eureka. So- Yeah, I spoke so, to green film shooting. Um, yeah. Bridget, I think it is there, um, who I was talking to. So yeah, she was talking about the situation in Germany and how they're working on Eureka. Yes, exactly. So they've all fed into the Eureka model and that's what they'll use. Uh, however, we, even when Eureka comes out, it will, it's only useful for uh, any, any productions happening in Europe itself. So it yeah. wouldn't uh, take into consideration if you're doing it in Asia or Australia or uh, the, the US, et cetera. So, but that's something that they will probably move forward with um, later on. But yeah, that's in a pilot phase at the moment. And I think once that does come out, I think a lot of the European organize, uh, a, lot, a lot of our European members will find it easier to, to work with them. Uh, but then we have a lot of European members that are with Albert, not just our UK uh, uh, members, but uh, our Irish members are with them. They've got uh, some, uh, a Scandinavian uh, a member as well. Uh, they've also got like a, a, a like a an arm, a, a, an Albert arm in the Netherlands. So if you're in the Netherlands, a production company, you can join uh, join their uh, their Dutch arm. So there's that. So at the moment, we're kind of starting to see. Before there was like no standards because you had EcoProd that had their own. Germany had their own carbon calculator. Uh, um, WAF had their own, Belgium had their own, etc. Um, so now you can start to see the, the main two ones that majority of our members are using. So. And do you find um, that most production companies and organizations are receptive to this, that they, they think it's a, it's a worthwhile thing to do and, a, and it's been proven as such, particularly on the cost side? Because I know that sometimes when I've spoken to you know, production figures, they've said, well, we need to make sure that it's it's uh, you know worthwhile in terms of the budget to do these initiatives, and actually it's been proven to be the case that they were, and they have a green plan, a green agenda, and that this is projects of all sizes. So, do you think now that clearly producers are aware and and willing to to take on board you know the the certi certification and also the you know the calculation and everything else to make sure that what they're doing on on set is meeting the green agenda, so to speak? It's so I wouldn't say uh, it's become the norm, no. it, uh, but it is gaining awareness and you're hearing more and more stories around it uh, in terms of 
more and more people are moving towards it. And it's exactly as you say, um, there's, so there's a, a two pronged approach. One approach is that uh, the, the commissioner, whoever the commissioners of the production are, are mandating it. So there's, there's that that's up and coming. Uh, and then there's also um, the idea that uh, you, then you have the other side, which is a lot of producers uh, are not, so, some are green aware, others are not. Uh, mm. And others for them, it's, they, they, in their head, they still have this idea that uh, the, the, the cost of going green is more expensive than not going green. And yeah, they're, yeah. They're thinking from like 10, 10, 20 years ago, and so things have changed. So there's a change in the mindset. There's things uh, one of our uh, members did, which was um, they they had uh, they had to do a series. Uh, they had a mission that they had to do, and what they had to do was they had to prove that it was green, and they would only get the full amount of funding if yeah. they reached that benchmark. If they didn't, then they wouldn't get a certain percentage of the funding. And so that was a, a big incentive for them, especially for smaller organizations where they ended up uh, looking. And then they realized, actually came to fruition that doing some things were greener was saving them money. And overall, they found a cert, up to a certain point that to do green or not do green, the, the budget was more or less the same. On some sides, you, you cost save. On the others, uh, it's a little bit more expensive and in, eventually it kind of all balances out. But there was a huge incentive for everybody that was in the uh, production to be green because they knew their their pay kind of depended on it because yeah. they were in order to be paid. So the, 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 there was still, the, sometimes there's still this stick and carrot. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, approach that, you know, some is some of it stick and others in some cases, it's a carrot approach that yeah. they want to be green and they want to really um, show that they're green. And there's an organization that's now just come up, uh, which are basically they, they've got a carbon calculator that um, organizations can use. They're not free, it's a consultancy, but they, they've got carbon calculator, which is attached to the finance calculator. So when you uh, do forecasting um, and put your figures in to say, you know, for example, I'm going to go for a green generator on set rather than uh, a normal uh, diesel or whatever generators they are. What's the, you know, A, how much carbon emissions am I saving? But also you can see real time what that would mean to your budget. Does it, your finance budget, does it make it go yeah. up? Or down? And so then you've always got the two, in sync so there are organizations uh, that are coming up that are, uh, are starting to look at this and realizing that uh, this um, in some cases like I said the stick approach is becoming more important but it's a way for them to show that you know you can do some forecasting you can put your stuff in your figures in and you can see a what it means to your emissions but also what it means to your finance so it's really interesting isn't it I mean I, I was talking to the sustainability manager for Jurassic World um, Dominion, you know, the new Jurassic World film. And she was talking about how uh, when she first started out, they would put perhaps a green runner on the project. And that was about it. Someone who didn't really have a great deal of authority, didn't really have much power influence and nothing really much was done. Um, whereas now you can see the studios, you know, the, the streamers, um, they're all, they've got their own teams, environmental teams. They've got whole initiatives in place. They've got protocols, everything. And they bring on board people like her, the sustainability manager, to oversee everything, make sure you know they, they stick to the green agenda, um, and they have reports, and, and everything is managed down to the you know the, the final point. So, and it's also as you touched on then about um, the supply chain, which is absolutely vital, and making sure that they use uh, companies that have uh, you know renewable material, etc. It's all part of the process. It certainly seems to be that case anyway with the bigger projects in particular. Um, that they have a proper sustainability approach, which has obviously been affected somewhat by COVID in the last year or two, um, but that they still are determined to stick to that agenda. And it seems to be really, really important to them, doesn't it? Yeah, so there are, like, but there, there's people in all spectrums. So there are those yeah. that are really, really want to make it work and will have 
teams or a sustainability manager. And then those there, there are those that will employ a sustainability manager, but again, the sustainability manager doesn't have authority. They're the ones that yeah. are sort of telling everyone what to do. And if people do it, they do it, but then they still have this idea of greenwashing sort of. Yeah. Like, oh, look, you know, we've got a sustainability manager, but whether they're actually taking those initiatives on, it's a different story. Um, so the, 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 there's the, the whole spectrum of it. But it, I am starting to hear sort of the change happening, um, you know, like those that are really into it, uh, the producers that are uh, really uh, into sustainability are looking at the things like, uh, you know, reusing of sets, uh, having teams, um, mandating vegetarian catering for example but then you hear different stories like in europe like you know in, in some cases they they've said oh you know like you know we tried to mandate vegetarian catering and it just didn't it wouldn't happen because the, the culture there is just this way however yeah. again when you had the the idea of uh, your um budget being taken until you meet some sustainability standards they found that, you know, when they said, well, we, we're going to have vegetarian catering, everybody was okay with it. Yeah. And then, and then they said, look, you know, we're not going to force anyone to have, uh, to eat the vegetarian food. If you want to have meat, how it comes here and you, you have to pay for it and you have to deal with your lunches, your dinners on your own. But uh, this is how we're going to deal with it. But then, the, like I said, when people's uh, paychecks <laughs> are also uh, taken on board, then they, they're probably more likely, you know, even if it goes against their grain a little bit, so have to, to go for it because it's like, that's the way it is. So the, but there's, like I said, the culture aspect changes a lot from country to country and, and you yeah. are hearing a lot of more positive stories and the, you know, having the big uh, American uh, uh, films etc and being labeled as green really does does help there's a lot of and then COVID has made a lot of change on this as well so yeah that's something that we're actually um, starting to pick up which is the idea of uh, virtual sets etc so you know then the new sets that were used for like the Mandalorian etc and so looking at looking at but the set saying okay you know we, we've got the idea of reusing sets where where possible um, mm. in the typical traditional way making them sustainable etc uh, you having one set and sharing that collaborating that with other organizations so keeps the cost down but also the idea that it's being reused and recycled etc and then on the other side you have covid and these new virtual sets that have come up that have just are still able to produce fantastic results uh, that you can do from home, but you save on the the traveling aspect, so you've, your commission, uh, your emissions are reduced. Um, but it's also something we we're going to start looking at is looking at the sustainability of these sets because the digital footprint, etc., on there is is going to be quite high because they're going, you know, they're, you know, four K, eight K, or how you know, how how green, how efficient are they? So how can we, okay overall they might reduce the emissions greatly because you're not traveling everywhere but how can we make these new virtual sets also greener and more sustainable so that's something we're also so looking at and it's really interesting it, yeah uh, it's, it's really interesting i mean i suppose there's sort of positives and negatives aren't there to covid one of the obvious negatives is the fact that there's a lot of ppe equipment that's being used and and it's obviously not, not always you know i mean they, they talk about the the masks that you can reuse which are now being used more on set, which is great, but it's not prevalent. It tends to be disposable still. So that there's the, that's the negative side is, is trying to manage, uh, you know, all the PPE equipment. But then I suppose the positive, as you touched on there, you know, is, is the, the greater use of virtual sets, but also uh, the fact that, you know, pollution levels are down because obviously people are traveling less. Um, tourist spots, you know, uh, are now sort of less damaged and, and looking much better than they've ever done before. So locations are sort of healthier and better, but it's a sort of a balancing act, isn't it? It's, it's trying to get everyone's mindset back on the sustainability agenda again, isn't it, after a difficult 18 months? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so that's something that uh, a lot of uh, the sustainability managers are trying to grapple in their own mind because they want 
their company to be as ethical, as sustainable as possible. But COVID, on like you said, on one hand, you have the PPE being disposed of on a regular basis, but also having to bring in the idea of single-use plastics again because... Yeah. You know, like for when you're eating or whatever it is or drinking water because of the COVID issue, not to be able to reuse them or have re reusable facilities, but that is, it's, it's a more cleaner in COVID infections for it to just be thrown away. So, yeah. So, but on one hand, yes, but it has changed uh, a lot of bro some broadcasters, some members have turned around and said oh, that actually they've decided that uh, during the COVID period that they will reduce their travel budget by X percent. So like, for example, 20 percent, they know that they're going to do that uh, regardless. So, that, you know, yeah, but everything's <laughs> a balancing act. <laughs> yeah, massively so. Yeah, it's a huge balancing act. Um, so with the broadcasters, obviously, that you know, you guys represent, just tell me a bit about what their approach has been then. I mean, you touched on it then briefly, but uh, are they all very much on board with the, the green agenda? So uh, most of the um, members are the sort of the, what I would say the Western Europe uh, are uh, the sort of the, um, the, the Latin uh, side of Europe is starting to look at it. They have sustainability um, management and they're starting to look at their strategies and they're, they're on that beginning step. In some cases, some of our most smaller members, they say, well, you know, we, we've, we've, because we've never had that much money, we've always had to be sustainable in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's part of their culture because they never had, you know, they have small, small teams, like not everybody's the BBC with 24,000 people with huge, you know, budgets, etc. So they've always in a, in a sense to be uh, budget orientated and really focusing on the budget in the smaller organizations. They're sort of naturally greener in a sense. Mm. So, and then there are those that are just starting to think about it and just starting to take that step. So, you know, it could just be one person in an organization that says, I'm really interested in sustainability. I want to come and learn from the groups and then I can feed back and see where I can, where I can go with this to try and make this an agenda. So yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> it, there's a, there's a huge disparity between them more, but uh, yeah, it's, it, but it is something that uh, the members that I have on board, which there's, uh, we have like 70 members and I have about 20 members in the, the groups and they're, they're, they're there for a reason. So, you know, they will really want to learn and, and try and implement best practices. They get a chance to go through the lessons learned from others and so they can, they can apply them quicker and, and move into that sustainability strategy much faster in a smoother format sharing of knowledge etc so yeah and you've got you've got the the green broadcasting group right yeah uh, green broadcasting uh, when you say broadcasting you mean the production so well the, so i was looking um at the website and it, it talks about the green broadcasting group maybe i'm mistaken on that name but it's the production group uh, so they're the that's yeah we have Two, green, two ones, which I said, which was one was for PSM and the high level strategy side of things and the, right. the bigger pieces like supplier chains, buildings, transport, et cetera, how to make those greener. And then we have the production group, which is those that are actually making the series, et cetera, in a green way. We've just opened up another smaller group with, uh, looking at cloud and sustainability because that's something that uh, some of our members that are further ahead and starting to look at scope three emissions, they they know that their cloud footprint is high, so they want to be able to add that in into their measurements into their net zero strategy. So they want to know, you know, a who are the greener providers? How can we use cloud in a more sustainable way? And then what what does that mean for our uh, footprint, our measurements? And then what we need to do in order to counterbalance that towards that net zero strategy. So. Right. Yeah, because I'm just I'm just going to look at your website now, and it talks about the uh, the deliverables. So it's got sustainable supply chain and procurement, which we've sort of touched on. Sustainable transport and broadcast. That transport's a key one as well, isn't it? It's a huge topic. Yeah. yeah those and sustainable investing. Yeah. So yep. Yep. So that's no, sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, with the transport. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a key one. So yes. Yeah, so the, uh, you know, with the. Uh, 
um, uh, some of our larger members have their own fleets, uh, whether that's you know outdoor broadcasting vehicles uh, to cars and everything in between to those that are actually they don't have them, but they hire them instead. But then the idea is that they can take this document, see what our members that do have broadcasting vehicles have done, um, and then they can apply that to their procurement chain to say, you know, like who who they could hire from, what things they can look out for, etc., in order to be green. And what about on the sustainable investing side as well? I mean, how how does that work in the film and TV world? Is that something that's taking off or? Um, so it is, but that that investment uh, work piece is on our pension schemes initially. So, uh, and that's what we're looking at. Uh, that will be out soon. We're actually in progress with that. So that should be out in September. I'm hoping uh, a document which is looking at pension schemes and the idea that uh, uh, the TCFD disclosure reporting needs to be done and actually how sustainable like uh, the finance uh, uh, industry is attaching themselves to those UN sustainability goals and the, the UN itself now has a has an arm that looks at finances and, and making sure that uh, they, they're uh, putting those sustainability goals as part of that that finance framework. Okay. And reporting on that uh, and having financial risks on around around uh, uh, the sustainable uh, investments. Right. Okay. And what would you say are the key in terms of film and television? What would you say are the key sustainability sustainability issues in the coming months, um, and how they're being tackled, and what new initiatives are being put in place uh, from your organisations? Okay. So I would say. Uh, the, in on the production side, I think the main thing is this uh, idea of, and this is purely from the members that are really st are in there and have been doing it for some time. So, so we have the those that have mandated green productions, which are making sure that they get their uh, certification on on every single part of uh, every single content they produce is is becoming certified those that are on the journey i think the main things are they they and then covid is always playing a big part in this which is obviously reducing their travel which is is more or less happening uh, there's also the idea of uh, travel being cut, but like I mentioned already, from the organizer uh, from the organisations, so the travel budget's being cut. Uh, a lot of organisations uh, on there are starting to. The main one is to see, look at the energy that they're using, so going towards the greener energy when producing uh, productions. Uh, the other big one is uh, sets as well, and that's the main sort of the the, the few key ones that they're starting to look at, which is the idea of sets, reusing the sets, making the sets sustainable. Uh, travel to the locations as well, so travel of cast and crew. So a lot of them are really starting to really look into depth around the, the actual emission. So when does it make sense for a crew member to, or a cast member to travel every day from their place of home or wherever they will call home, to the set as opposed to staying somewhere local on set but then actually making sure that if that that place that they're also staying at the hotel the b, &B whatever it is is sustainable as well so looking at it from that supplier point of view and really getting into like i'm talking really nitty-gritty in-depth side of things also for logistics there's when things need to be transported over um, that that is kept to the emissions from transport is kept to a minimum so yes okay they may be using uh, a green vehicle but that, that logistics of going from a b to c is done in the most efficient manner as possible that the lorry or the the vehicle itself is carrying the right things for that that logistics to happen in the greenest form. So, you know, if, if the several sets need to be uh, sent out, that they're all done in the most efficient manner as possible. And by efficient, I mean, keeping that uh, re reduction down. So there's some of them are even using like third party tools to allow that to happen. That's so, so yeah. interesting. There's so many, there's so many different facets, aren't there? So many different areas to consider and uh, ways to tackle things. It's fascinating. I mean, you touched then briefly on the, 
set, uh, you know, construction and then obviously reusing it for other projects. But you then got issues like IP, you know, international property, because if on the bigger projects, let's say Jurassic World is a good example, you know, you've got these vast sets uh, that are specifically constructed for that project. Yeah. Um, and if the film hasn't come out, you can't then just pass it on to someone else to, to be reused. Um, and also, it's not always the case that um, the sets can be reused uh, or are made of renewable materials or anything like that. So it's it's kind of a tricky one, isn't it? Yeah, but th that is something that those broadcasters that are really into green production being trying to to do it and are attached to organizations like EcoProd, Albert, or have consultants, etc., that are, are doing that. It's That's how far ahead they are, you know, mm. the, in, in terms of those that are really moving towards green production. And, and like I said, they're starting to really look at, really in depth. Uh, they're at that point where they can, because they've been doing it for a while and they've got yeah. their strategies sorted out. So it's like, how do we finesse this even more? They've, they've been doing their measurements, so they know they want to still reduce their carbon emissions. And what, so, you know, you, you may have gone from, uh, for example, catering uh, from meat to local, seasonal and vegetarian, and you will have already done the generators, et cetera. And you've looked at travel, but now you're you're at that point where you you're really starting to say, you know, maybe there are things that we could still do on the travel aspect to really reduce mm. it and and getting into that depth that I just spoke about. Yeah, there's always more you can do, isn't there? There, there are always ways of improving your you know green agenda and sustainability approach. So yeah, That's and then back into their you know like into back into Alberts and back into mm. Ecodes, et cetera. So you know the 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 mark uh, the benchmark is always you know setting a standard but you know they, it's not just going okay we've reached this benchmark but it's like how can we make it better beyond yeah yeah that's amazing it's fascinating yeah all right well listen that's been brilliant thank you so much okay.